So I just landed at Sea Point Beach in Kittery and i um, gonna be trying, I think I found a good spot to try the rest of the quick shot features here in the DJI Mini 2 SE. So the sun's about to go down, so I'm not gonna make this long. We'll see you in like two seconds. Take off. The home point has been updated. Please check it on the map. All right, you guys. So here is part two of the Quick Shots tutorial for the Mini 2 SE. As you can see before taking off, I quickly uh, made sure the horizon line was as level as possible. If you watch part two, you notice that the gimbal calibration error that I've been struggling with really hasn't affected the video quality so far. Um, however, I'm excited to see how uh, this more open space does. I'm definitely pushing the drone to see what it can do today. All right, so here I am heading into the quick shots. I decided to start with the circle feature. That's one I kind of left off in part one and didn't really fully execute. So I'm excited to see how more of an open space allows me to not worry as much about obstacle avoidance and just letting the drone do its thing. I'm also interested to see without active tracking on this specific drone, how I'm able to move around and how that might affect the quick shots. So as you can see for this first one, I really didn't uh, adjust the altitude or the distance at all. So it didn't really make um, a video that I was particularly happy with. However, um, that's really easy to adjust so once you do select your subject, whether by tapping the green button or by um, drawing a box around the subject, you can then go in and adjust the distance. So um, you can have, you can still start in as close as I did. However, what I'm deciding to do here is move the drone away from me and keep a somewhat similar um, distance around. So there's two ways of really adjusting the distance the drone is gonna be circling around you. It's both by starting the drone further away from you and by adjusting the distance within the settings of the quick shots feature. So I started to kind of walk around and look around as the drone began to maneuver through this quick shot, uh, the circle quick shot here. And as you can see, as I move away from the original subject, the drone doesn't really change, which is kind of cool because despite having the active tracking, it allows me as the subject to, to move around and make the shot a little bit more engaging. Uh, not that I don't like those shots of, around a, a subject that's staying still, like a lighthouse or something like that, but whenever you have a human element, there's something exciting about seeing someone running or moving. So you can now see me start to pack up my bag because I knew I was going to want to be more mobile for the rest of this shoot once I saw that I could move around and still have the drone uh, go through the quick shots maneuver. So it didn't uh, you know, affect it at all. It was kind of exciting to see that. So notice again those arrows there, the yellow, that's where the drone's going to, the direction the drone's going to go in. Now I was still impressed to see that the drone could lock on on me even though I was, you know, over 100 feet away. So one thing to keep in mind is, you know, the sub keeping your subject in um, the frame. So if you do decide to move around while performing these quick shot maneuvers, having the subject focused on where your subject, the human or the person in the shot is either gonna start or end, might be a good idea. I'm definitely excited to try this out more and try to uh, use this to get more creative and engaging shots, especially without the active uh, tracking feature. Being alone, honestly, oftentimes, it's nice to be able to have a quick shots feature like this because in order to film myself, I usually have to have my Mavic 3, so, um, having this Mini 2 SC be able to get these shots is pretty exciting. That was one thing I was kicking myself about not going with one of the Mini 3 models because 
Uh, I do think active fracking is a pretty great feature. Three. So by having the drone this far away, it did allow me to move around as the subject and still keep myself within frame and kind of mess around with it afterwards. As you'll see in the final video that I always post at the end of each one of my tutorials, um, you'll kind of notice how cool this shot ends up being. Um, this, this boomerang, in my opinion, came out super smooth. It wasn't terribly windy, but it was windy enough for you know the gimbal to potentially be uh, shaky. The gimbal calibration error was something else I wasn't sure if it would affect. Uh, so far, nothing. You'll see at the end of the video that I speed it up and it really remains super smooth. And the distance I kept the drone at to start and finish this was, was definitely one that I'm going to keep in mind when I do this shot again because it seemed to be a really good distance, really effective and dramatic shot. And like I said, knowing where I start and point the, the quick shots, me on the ground is where I end up, you know, I, I know I'm going to be in the frame. So it really allows you to kind of not put the controller down, but you know, take a break from flying there for a quick second and get creative with your shots. Move around, try to think of different ways you could engage the subject. Although I was excited to you know, see how the shot looked with me over water, I was really happy too with some of the backlit shots um, that I got here. That's what makes this particular area, uh, you know, I thought it would be good for this this demonstration is because you you have light kind of coming from all different directions. You can kind of get different shots and different angles. Now this shot coming up next was handheld. So what I did was I got the drone down somewhat lower and I decided to just hold on with my right hand. Um, that's where the, the forward joystick is. And I knew if I kept it fairly straight, it didn't need to active track. It could just kind of keep me in frame. Once I you know had a steady hand on the joystick, there was a pretty smooth and consistent um, flight. So having myself disappear into the shot too is kind of a nice um, feature as well. Right now as well too, one thing I noticed was the dynamic range I'm still able to get with the video. I have not put a neutral density filter on the Mini uh, 2SE yet. I don't know if I'll ever even need to, especially with the gimbal already kind of having trouble with the wind, I don't want to add any extra weight to it. So for right now, I'm really happy with with how the, the, um, the photos and videos have maintained the high dynamic range that I'm looking for. So as you can see here, when I do kind of fly the drone sideways, that is when the gimbal gets kind of tilted. So I wonder if that's where I'm having the gimbal calibration issue mostly. However, as you've seen in the past, it does calibrate itself pretty quickly on its own. So it's kind of a bizarre defect right now that I'm working through. So far it hasn't affected any of the quick shots though, so I'm very happy with that. It almost ends up being more when I'm free flying and not recording. So, so far I haven't really missed the shot because of it. See, as you can see, the horizon line is straightening out and I have not gone into my settings to calibrate the gimbal manually. So the gimbal, in my opinion, is calibrating. It's just maybe needing to stop flight or pause flight before, um, you know, kind of calibrating there. So I thought this was kind of a cool shot. Like I said, I really like how the drone's been able to maintain a high dynamic range. Being able to take the three exposure bracketed um, images does allow me to push that even further without the neutral density filter or the UV filter or anything like that. So, one thing too is you know, I have been shooting in both um, RAW and JPEG. I mostly shoot in auto with, with this drone just because, like I said, I, I, I almost end up getting more distracted in the settings when I switch to manual and I seem to have <clears throat> more efficient and effective flights when I, um, you know, just leave it on auto. So this next section, I did decide to switch the gimbal over to FPV mode just to see what it looked like. And it kind of created a couple cool clips that I will add to the end. It did feel pretty jerky. And I think it's because I have some of the gimbal settings 
not align well with this mode, this gimbal mode. So, um, you know, take it for what it is. I just thought, you know, while I was out here, this could be a cool place to, to kind of test out the FPV side of things. Especially if I do end up, you know, having this gimbal calibration error for a while, having the FPV experience might end up, you know, making it so that the horizon line really doesn't matter at the end of the day, which FPV is pretty much all about. You just kind of are working with the altitude, excuse me, the attitude of the drone. But look at this backlit shot, you know, that was some great lighting, didn't even need to touch my settings, it's just the camera's doing its job. At the end of the day though, I did decide to switch back to the follow mode uh, so I could keep um, you know, flying around and grabbing some extra B-roll. I saw this couple walking their dog along the beach and decided to drop, drop into the two time zoom and I feel like I got a really fun clip of them in motion. So I was happy I you know, decided to get back to work here. You know, Even though this drone is so small, it, it's able to keep up with the speed of, of this particular subject. Um, even though I am pretty far away. So the two times zoom does help that. That's the three times really quick. Um, you kind of have to toggle between each one before getting back to the uh, standard wide shot. So I did decide to fly around for a while. Um, I am gonna speed this up to get to the end here because I wanted to show you how well the drone handled so close to water. I know a lot of people get nervous about flying over water and most of this flight has been over water. So. Um, I am going to speed this up so you guys can take a look at that. Alright, so we're back. I'm trying to get some dramatic shots before the sun hides behind the trees. I really wanted to drop down low to the water and grab some, um, some shots of the, the waves catching that sunlight there. I know I have obstacle avoidance on the bottom of the drone, but I'm still going to you know, be mindful obviously of my current altitude, which is negative. Um, I didn't want the drone to think it was, you know, able to go even lower than it than it could. But right now I'm really happy. These are really smooth shots. You can see me there off in the distance. However, the um, the gimbal that did get wonky here as I uh, you know pan past myself. Which is too bad. But you know at the end of the day I'm just so happy to be flying this thing. I'm having so much fun. Hope you guys are enjoying these videos and you know getting to learn more about the drones you just got. It sounds like a lot of people are picking up the Mini 2, Mini 2 SE, and the Mini 3 Pro. So I quickly landed it um, and turned the drone on and off to, to just reset the gimbal. Um, one, one thing I did notice is that the, the gimbal tends to have more of an error when the longer, like the longer into the flight. So I reset it. As you can sell, tell, the horizon is really straight right now. And I sent, you know, sent the drone back off for a couple of other passes over the water. If I had different shoes on, I definitely would have gone down there and maybe trudged around in the wet sand and, and messed around more with the quick shots. But um, I always find it fun to get some B-roll of different, um, you know, sections of the area that I do get the quick shots in, so that you can kind of piece them in all together. And you'll see that. Uh, towards the end of the video here when I uh, post the final edit. This is a good time of year to be taking shots like this because there aren't as many migratory birds on the you know immediate shore. Uh, this otherwise might be filled with little packs of, of birds so um, this is a drone I'm not sure I want to test too well with uh, obstacle avoidance situations. <clears throat> I'll save that for my Mavic, but um, right now I'm really happy. And the speed too in this drone really allows you to get from point A to point B. And I feel like so far I've gotten a lot of footage with the battery life. I'm just about to approach 20%, but um, as you can see, I'm, I'm really close. Although I'm over water, I'm, I'm really not worried about it. It will automatically return home after 20% anyways, but that, like you've seen before in some of my other videos, you can you know, take back control of the drone even if that feature um, takes place. 
All right, so one more pass over the water before taking the drone back in. Um, just really happy I pushed myself to get out here today because the golden light really did well um, capturing the water and this, this beach here in particular. So it, that is something to keep in mind, you know, if you're recording and you're at 20%, you may get interrupted by that notification. So maybe start your shot after that. All right, so that's a wrap. I decided to bring the drone back and I'm really happy I was able to find a better location for part two of this uh, Quick Shots tutorial, guys. I hope you enjoyed. If any of this information was helpful at all, please make sure to send a note in the comments or hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate it and so far, I've had a lot of fun uh, really pushing this little mini drone to the test. All right, that's a wrap at Sea Point Beach, you guys. That was fun. I cannot wait to look at that footage and share it with you guys. So glad I came out to do another round of the quick shots um, and just another reason to use them, I think. You know, I just got super creative and uh, really happy with the, the, the video that I got. So stay tuned, man.